Okay, considering the significant nature of the storm that we've got, we've been doing extended deeper dives on this storm to keep you updated as it moves through Northern California and all of California for that matter. So what we're looking at now is the Sunday night update. And even though we've seen the big bulk of the rain from this storm, as of Sunday night, there are still some very important aspects of this storm still to go, both here at home in the Bay Area, and as we'll see towards the end of this deeper dive for Southern California over the next few days. But in terms of our implications here at home, one of the things that's of greatest concern you can see on the looping radar image behind me, watch that last frame right there. Look at that very well-organized line of heavier rain. We're gonna come back to that in a second because I think one of the most important aspects here in the Bay over the next eight to 10 hours is going to be the focus of steady lines of convection that could develop over the South Bay, really like Santa Cruz Mountains, Southern Santa Clara Valley, and then down to Monterey. We're gonna come back to that in one second. I think it's one of the more important topics to discuss for, the, for this evening and for what's left of this storm. But first, a little review. We got a lot of rain throughout the day on Sunday. And if we just look at the Sunday totals, they are all over the place and they really range widely. Livermore only got six tenths of an inch of rain. Nevada got three and a half. Bodega Bay got four inches out at the coast. Boulder Creek in the Santa Cruz Mountains came away with just about three and a half inches of rain. So with that much water on the landscape, a couple of housekeeping items to take care of. There are some flood warnings that are in place right now, and these are likely to shift over the next 12 hours. But as of where things stand for this Sunday night update, the two areas the National Weather Service has had consistently outlined here would be the uh, valleys through Sonoma County, into Marin and Napa, just for a generalized notion that streams and creeks are already approaching their banks for this location. So if you live in some of those rural spots and you know where the trouble items usually are, this is the National Weather Service way of saying, heads up, we're seeing some minor flooding there already, uh, overflowing banks. The other one would be down here as we take a look at... Uh, near Sonol in Union City. This would be Alameda Creek as it flows through that canyon. Already confirmation that that's been overflowing its banks in some places. So those are two places. But you have to remember, it's entirely likely that we'll see more over the course of the next 12 hours as these lines of convection we're about to see start to move over some of the southerly parts of the bay. In general, though, there's a flood watch that stays in effect until Monday morning at 10 a.m. This is the National Weather Service's way of just broadly saying, in general, everybody has the potential to see some degree of flooding between now and then. And should something develop, then they'll spotlight those with individual urban and small stream flood locations that they'll get real specific on locators, and we'll let you know about those when they happen. But if you live in the bay... You, you're included in the flood watch until we get to Monday morning. All right, let's come back now to the radar and spotlight that point of what's probably the biggest importance uh, impact here over about the next eight to 10 hours. When we look at that line of rain coming on shore, that really well-organized of heavier rain coming in off the coast, and then there's another one down here. See how there's this straight line here? This is the area of concern. What we're seeing come in over the city right now as we go towards Sunday evening is impressive enough on its own and is a good example of what we should expect to happen through the remainder of Sunday night. Isolated pockets of heavier rain that will move across any part of the bay. But I want to bring your attention back here to this line, which might not have stood out all that much when we were looking at the live radar. But remember, this is a long-term game over the rest of tonight. We're talking about the next eight to nine hours. And within that window, you're going to see a pattern show up down here, where you get these steady lines of heavier rain that come in over the Santa Cruz Mountains. There's a perfect example. Look at the time frame up there. Not to say this is exactly going to happen at 12.15 tonight, but rather to come away with this notion that there's uh, a pretty good signal in the forecast models that we'll continue to see a steady line of energy in the atmosphere keep redeveloping over that general location. So think southernmost Santa Clara Valley, uh, Santa Cruz Mountains for certain, and then all along that drive down past Coyote Valley, down 101 as you start to head down towards um, Monterey. But that's the p place to watch. Look, there's 4 a.m., 5 a.m., they keep developing. That's probably one of the more important locations to be aware of, both from a flooding standpoint, but also over the course of the next eight to nine hours. The, we're at the stage of this storm now where it's got the ability to produce some thunderstorms, maybe even somewhat more severe weather. There's been no signs of any funnel clouds as of Sunday night, and it's not a high likelihood 
But these are the kinds of storms that would have the energy to develop some of those real brief downpours, maybe a little bit of rotation on them, which is always a point of interest, although not a major concern from this storm. If anything, it'd be maybe some small hail, thunder and lightning, and more importantly, the heavy downpours of rain onto a landscape which is already fairly saturated. So yeah, even though we've been focusing down here, take a look at the time frame. we're looking at Monday morning, Obviously, it doesn't only rain there. Look at that cell coming in over the city. Again, these don't happen exactly in those locations at exactly those times, but they're a good sign that the ingredients will be there Bay Area wide from now, really through tomorrow, to continue to see these isolated pockets develop. Let's just look at the Bay Area as a whole. So I brought us back. This is Sunday night. We know the South Bay down here is going to have an area of focus. But if we let this play through, watch what happens from Sunday night into Monday. In addition to that, you, you keep seeing them pop up in other locations. They're pretty widely spaced. It's a lot of on again, off again, more off again than it will be on. In other words, there's gonna be a lot of time here where you're not getting rained on throughout the remainder of Monday. But every once in a while, all of a sudden, the sky's gonna get dark and you're gonna get a brief little downpour. It'll get in and then it'll get out. And depending on how heavy it is and how long it sticks around, it could contribute to some additional flooding concerns when each one comes through. It could also come with its fair share of fairly strong wind because these have real gusty winds that drop out of the bottom of them. And then that wind spreads out and you can get hit with another round of 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts even after the main wind event had passed. By the way, I've got to show you the winds that we've had on Sunday, and we've got to talk about why we still have an element of broadly-based wind concern from this system, even beyond those individual cells, for at least the remainder of Sunday night. But here's the big picture perspective on this. Why do we still have so much more time to go? Why is this system still gonna be lingering around all the way through Monday? And if we just step back and take a look at it on the big picture, here we are Sunday evening. Take a look at this big kind of circular echo right there. That's the center of this storm. That's where the area of low pressure is. Watch it spin. That's what's driving all this. That's what's steering all of this. And over the next few hours, it's going to drift off to the north a little bit. So that will pull a lot of the convective energy at least somewhat away from us. And it certainly lessens the wind for us. The time frame on that is very early Monday. You can see we're still on the tail here. Some of that energy is getting pulled our way. And then watch what happens with that system as we go into late Monday and into Tuesday. It drifts back down on the coast as it kind of dissipates and loses energy. We won't feel much of it by then, but you can see why we still have scattered showers going even on Tuesday, because that system is still going to be lurking here, just kind of wobbling around a bit. We've seen the most impressive side of this storm already. That's what came through Sunday. And now as we go through Sunday night into early Monday morning, we need to stay at least on guard and storm ready because we still have like this second chapter of intensity which will come in the form of these isolated thunderstorms. Okay, in terms of the wind aspect of this storm, while you could say we've seen the worst of it, we're not out of the woods yet on wind. We still have a high wind warning that's gonna go until we get towards the later hours on Sunday night. But if you look at the numbers, Mount Elmenham had a 98 mile an hour wind gust and there's, there's a lot of reason to believe that's actually an accurate reading just from looking at how strong the winds were in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and what we know about the structure of the storm to pull some of those winds down, especially to some of the higher elevations throughout the bay. One of the reasons why the mountains got hit so much harder than everybody else, but look at SFO. You had a 62 mile an hour wind gust out at the airport. That was one of the stronger locations. We didn't all get 60 mile an hour gusts for our part of the bay, but there were a lot of 40, 45 mile an hour gusts in the communities where we all live. And we've been covering down trees Bay Area wide today, and that's also been a significant impact from this. So on the one hand, thankfully, we're now past the stage of this storm where it's able to produce widespread wind like this, but we're not completely out of the risk factor from this storm, and we'll see why that is when we look at it on the big, big picture. This takes us back to early Sunday. Remember that low we're watching wobble by Sunday night? It's way up here. Here's where it was on Sunday morning at 8 a.m., the center of it, quickly developed right off the coast for us. And that's why we felt the wind as intensely as we did. This was a rapid intensification of an area of low pressure that 24 hours before this wasn't even there. And then it developed so quickly, it was right off the coast as it did that. And we felt that intensification in those winds as we went through the late morning and through the afternoon. 
That's when the worst of it was. But if we look at the wind speeds on here, keep your eye on the time there. That's Sunday through the late uh, afternoon and really more early evening. We're still looking at wind gusts on here in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range in the hills. But watch the colors get better from here on out. So we're not done. Still got to get through the next several hours. On a broad scale sense, this storm still has the ability to produce damaging winds. But once we get past about, say, 10 o'clock, uh, and that high wind warning will be allowed to expire, that aspect of the storm will also be behind us. But remember, those isolated cells all the way through Sunday night and into Monday afternoon, the individual cells themselves will be able to bruise some pretty strong wind gusts right in the vicinity of them. And that, those are gonna be a lot more difficult to isolate and pinpoint, but just to, to know that you could get one of those anywhere in the Bay. But over the next eight to nine hours, it's gonna be a little more likely down in that Southern Santa Clara Valley and over the Santa Cruz Mountains. Okay, we all still have a wind advisory too for where we live. So the winds have definitely been worse in the mountains, but that wind advisory, which is more like 40 mile an hour gusts possible, we still have that going until we get to 10 o'clock on Sunday night and then things will begin to calm down. So that covers the rain, it covers the wind. There obviously is a snow aspect to this storm, which is a really good news story from a building the snowpack story, which had been falling behind for this year so far. This is a great storm in, from two standpoints. One, it's gonna be able to produce a lot of snow at the higher elevations. You can see the areas in lighter color up here show you where we're looking at perhaps three feet of snow. Up on the peaks, Donner Pass, Echo Summit. So it's got a good snow amount that it can produce, but it's also cold enough that snow level gets down to around 4,000 feet. This is just through Sunday. As we get into Monday, that snow level is going to drop, and it'll go down to maybe 3,500 feet. It makes it a mess of a drive. Monday is still not a good day to drive in the Sierra, but by Tuesday, we should have seen the majority of this system's ability to keep producing snow in the Sierra start letting up, but we're gonna see on and off again flurries continue in the mountains really all through tomorrow. So that's the big picture view once again. You can see that line of convection, which is just about to move uh, over at least the central part of the bay as we go through Sunday evening, but we'll see individual lines like that develop really between now and uh, Monday morning. Big picture view once again. There's one other aspect of this storm to discuss. Remember how we saw the center of it was going south? Two things about that. You no doubt have heard, because so many people have loved catching on to this buzzword, that this storm is pulling an atmospheric river as part of its makeup. And when we look at the water vapor on it, you can kind of see it. That's what it looks like in the cloud structure. But if we just isolate where that water vapor is in the atmosphere, you can really see that's a pretty well-organized plume, higher concentrations of water vapor that have gotten pulled into this storm from even south of Hawaii. It's got a lot of moisture to work with. And look where that's pointed. That's Sunday night, and if we look at this a slightly different way, there's our storm driving everything. We've gotten our share of it, and when you look at where that atmospheric river has been pointed on Sunday, look at all the rain consistently hitting Southern California, and then look what happens on Monday. This is Monday in the afternoon, and that's when this storm produces what could be its most impactful and problematic aspects on a statewide level of this whole thing. The amount of rain that's about to go into Southern California, they've already gotten a lot on Sunday, but Monday is really gonna be the main event for them as that plume not only puts its full force in terms of rainfall, but it's gonna stall. Now we're looking at Tuesday morning. And then as we go through Tuesday afternoon and evening, you'll have some follow-up scattered on again, off again, showers and thunderstorms there. They'll also have their share of convective heavy downpours, which will lead to follow-up concerns. But it's really gonna be the fact that that atmospheric river is pointed at them. Look at the rainfall totals. So we know what we got here in the city, about two inches of rain, let's say, Sunday going into Monday morning. Look what LA's about to get, closer to six inches. So it becomes a much bigger concern. We're gonna see a lot more headlines likely out of Southern California. It's not just LA, Santa Barbara, Ventura County, and LA County, and all of those locations that are just downhill of those mountain ranges, which are perfectly oriented to get hit from the way that atmospheric river is uh, angling towards them. It really will maximize the, the ability for those mountains to force that storm to drop even more rain. It's a very important situation to be watched in Southern California. Okay, for us, we've got one more first alert day. That's Monday. We know why that is. We'll have our scattered showers with occasional thunderstorms around. Then we're going to get a little bit of a break. Late Wednesday into Thursday, there's another system coming our way. It doesn't look anything like this one. It doesn't look super impactful at all. It'll just be a run-of-the-mill rainmaker, and that's good. 
we could use a little bit of a break. So that's where things stand now. We'll be tracking this in great detail throughout the course of the rest of this evening's newscast. And Jessica will be on tomorrow morning during the uh, morning newscast with the latest from uh, overnight developments from this. Thanks for checking in with us.